full body five days a week. This is the training split I've been running for the last six months, and I think it's great. Now, when I explain this setup to your average gym bro, they tend to look at me like I've got 10 heads. Sometimes they'll suggest that body part splits make more sense, where you just destroy one or two muscles a day and then give them a full week of rest to let the muscles grow. And while this clearly can work, I think there are much better options out there. One option would be the push-pull leg split, where you're at least hitting each muscle twice a week, something highlighted in the scientific literature as being better for muscle growth. Upper-lower splits are also solid, and while full body training is relatively popular, most people seem to think of it as a beginner's routine, where you're only training two, maybe three days a week, which is exactly why this split stands out so much. There just seems to be something wrong about hitting every muscle every day, except there isn't. Now, I was first introduced to this style of training exactly three years ago in an interview that I did with Menno Henselmans, where he explained that optimal training frequency is different for beginners than it is for advanced trainees. If you are a beginner, then most research shows that there is actually no benefit to training a muscle group more than once a week. Hitting each body part once a week, that works very well for beginners. But as you get more advanced, the time course that you can elevate muscle protein balance, that period, basically decreases as you get more advanced. So basically after you lift weights, there's a period of time when muscle protein synthesis increases and the muscle becomes more sensitive to amino acids. This is why your muscle grows in the first place. And research tells us that that response stays elevated for about two days or so in new lifters, but actually returns to near baseline after just 12 hours or so in more experienced trainees. So the original theory was that if you're a well-trained lifter, the more frequently you can hit a muscle, the more spikes you'll see in muscle protein synthesis and the better muscle growth you'll get as a result. But the question is, do these more frequent spikes in muscle protein synthesis actually add up to produce more muscle growth over time? Well, that's a very good and very controversial question. Some skeptics have pointed out that these studies only measured mixed muscle protein synthesis, which isn't as relevant for building contractile muscle tissue as myofibrillar muscle protein synthesis. Also in 2014, one group of researchers really flipped this theory on its head, claiming that acute protein synthesis doesn't even correlate with hypertrophy at all. However, when I brought this study up here on the channel, I had another protein researcher reassure me that protein synthesis does in fact predict hypertrophy, an idea I personally think is more supported by the literature overall. So while the jury is still out on the theory, I think what we really want to know is, will this high frequency style of training get me more jacked? And this is where it gets really interesting. In 2012, a group of Norwegian sports scientists conducted a secret frequency study that would come to be known as the infamous Norwegian Frequency Project. Now, because this study was originally designed to give their national powerlifting team a competitive edge, the results were never fully published, only presented at clandestine scientific conferences with one dusty abstract making its way onto the internet. But despite all its secrecy, I still like this study because it used very highly trained lifters. So they split subjects into a group hitting their full body three days a week and a group hitting their full body six days a week. The rest of the program, including weekly volume, was exactly the same. And after 15 weeks of training, the six day per week group got nearly twice as big and strong, increasing their lifts by a total of 10% versus 5%, while also gaining significantly more muscle. Granted, while I do personally trust these authors and the results, because this data set was never published in a peer-reviewed journal, there is reason to be skeptical. So last year, a different team of researchers attempted to replicate this infamous Norwegian project, but this time they used early intermediate lifters and only ran the study for six weeks compared to the original 15. So perhaps it's not surprising that they didn't find much of anything, similar strength and size gains between the three day per week and six day per week program. But at worst, I think this study shows us that both frequencies can be effective and does lend support to the idea that the benefits of higher frequencies are likely seen with more experienced lifters than less experienced lifters. Still an important point to consider with all this research is that weekly volumes are always equated between groups, whereas in the real world, they probably wouldn't be. Higher frequencies tend to lead to higher volumes. This has led many experts in the field to argue that these studies don't even account for the single greatest benefit of higher frequency training, being able to accumulate more high quality volume. And I think that's a good point. When I was in Australia training with Eric Helms, he explained to me that the main benefit of high frequency full body training is simply being able to spread out your weekly volume to help increase the quality of each set. What was the first question I was gonna ask you? You're gonna ask me, uh, why do I choose to train full body? That's right. That's right. So I asked myself, right? <laughs> I think for the most part, the benefit is that it's, it's a way to manipulate volume spread. If I did like we did today, leg press cap raise, and then have upper body, I have way more energy and I can distribute the same amount of volume with less fatigue over the week, right. doing four more full body sessions. Right. So it's more about volume and fatigue management. And this is how I've come to think about training splits in general. 
how well can we organize these three variables into a training week? In other words, does our split allow us to reach optimal volumes at an appropriate intensity while allowing for recovery? So let's start with volume. So there's general scientific consensus at this point that 10 to 20 working sets is a good weekly volume range for most muscles, but it's not enough to determine how much volume you're doing per week. You also need to consider how much volume you're doing per workout, as new data suggests that there's a per workout ceiling for volume, somewhere around five to 10 sets per muscle. This means that after you've done five sets or so for any given muscle in a single workout, any extra work that you do risks falling into the wasted sets or junk volume category as far as hypertrophy goes. So splitting up your volume across more workouts throughout the week reduces the likelihood of doing any so-called wasted sets, and you can make sure that they all count. And this is one advantage of doing high frequency training. So what about intensity? Well, I think full body training has an advantage here as well. And this is something I definitely didn't expect when I first started this split, because I thought that hitting the same muscle on consecutive training days would just sort of tire me out as the week went on. But I've actually found the opposite because I'm normally only hitting one exercise per muscle, I can really give that exercise my full focus and attention. And because the volume per workout is so low compared to other splits I've run, I find I'm able to recover from it so much faster as well. For example, on day three of my new program for lower body, all I have to do is hit three sets of leg press and four sets of calves. So I find I'm able to execute those leg presses so much better than if they came after, say, squats and lunges on a leg day. And honestly, never having to do a full leg day on this split has been great. Historically, I'd always feel so fatigued by the time I got to the third or fourth exercise that no matter how determined I was, my performance would just start to take a hit at some point as the workout droned on. And you can contrast this with full body training where you're normally only hitting one exercise for legs on any given day. So what about recovery? This is the thing most people seem to have the most reservation with. I mean, there's just no way you can recover with only 24 hours between workouts, right? Actually, I would say it's not that hard. Remember, when I say we're hitting chest every day, I'm not saying that we're hitting a full Monday chest day every day. That would definitely be overtraining. Instead, you can think of it like taking a typical Monday chest workout and just splitting it up across four or five days of the week. Also, by the second or third week, a phenomenon known as the repeated bout effect will kick in, where your body adapts to the new stimulus and learns to recover faster than you ever have before. As a result, you'll likely never feel sore after training, which is actually a good thing as soreness simply impedes performance. So a high frequency split should actually improve your body's ability to recover, not impair it. This is of course, assuming you don't overdo it with either volume or intensity in the individual workouts, especially early on. So while all of this certainly seems like a home run for high frequency training, there are a few potential concerns to be aware of. First, because there isn't as much time for recovery between sessions, it is very important that you stop a bit shorter of failure for the first few weeks, generally being more in the seven to eight RPE zone rather than the usual eight to nine. Then as the repeated bout effect kicks in and your body adapts, you can start to train closer to failure again. You may also need to train some muscles while still sore for the first week or two, which can be annoying, but granted this is common on any new training routine, but still does highlight the importance of doing a full and complete warm up before training. Of course, after the first week or two, this soreness concern should totally go away as well. So is full body five days a week the best training split? I would say for me at the moment, yeah, I think it is. After years of running push-pull leg splits and upper lower splits, I think this routine is giving me exactly the motivation I need for continued progress. Still, I wouldn't necessarily put it on a pedestal and say it's the best in all contexts. And if you're interested in a full summary of how I think it stacks up against other splits, you can pause the screen here and see what might be best for you at the moment.